Thanks for Hi, everyone. Hi, Mike. Hello. Okay, the recording is on. Mariana, you want to get started? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. So, welcome to Career Go workshops. And to uh, Career Go today, we'll speak about speed interview and demo. So, you'll be able to practice a little bit. Uh, and it's a good opportunity. When we get to practice, then we start learning. Uh, this call will be shared in our Career Go social media for reference and will uh, be uploaded to the YouTube channel and you can check later. If you have questions, if you want to just watch it again, it's there. Uh, if you're not comfortable being streamed or recorded, please, uh, you can leave the session now. Uh, the community will help you with networking so you can meet all everyone here. Uh, you can also share your LinkedIn uh, on the chat if you would like to do so. Practice and skills focus knowledge on any specific topic. So we have topics every week, twice a week and share and learn from others. We all here, all volunteers work to help see everyone in a job they love as well as find and use their full potential. Uh, the call structure is uh, we encourage you, if you feel comfortable doing so, to share a LinkedIn profile on the chat. I'm going to do that in a little bit when I finish. And uh, you can keep your cameras on and mute the sound during presentation. So we know we are online and then sometimes it makes noise in between, but we encourage you to open your camera. It's a good space to practice uh, being in a camera. Survey at the end of the call. We'll share a survey. It's very quick. Take, we'll take you one minute. If you could respond, that would be great. We want to learn from you. Group selfie. We take a quick group selfie at the end. So we stay until the end and then we can share that group selfie. It's a good to have the memory of what happened. Kudos and recommendations. We encourage you to uh, share recommendations about the speaker. Everyone here is a volunteer and they dedicate their time and effort to serve you so we can recognize them. More than a thousand people get hired in 2021 by applying the learnings. So the learnings that we share here, it is proven and it's something that we learn in our career and then we share with you. Uh, when you get hired, please share with us. Um, People get hired within three to six months when applying these learnings, so it's very effective. And our promise, continue to attend uh, weekly sessions, apply what you learn. So when you finish the session, really apply and ask questions. Be curious. This is a space, it's a safe space. So we encourage you to do that and teach others what you learn. Uh, please engage and ask questions join and share what you learn with others, connect with others, do the networking and subscribe to the YouTube channel to get all videos. Our next session is coming up. Foreign Creditions Recognition Loan Program, uh, Sunday, March 14th, 10 a.m. Reading and adjusting to personality types, Thursday, March uh, 18th, 8 p.m and Nevet Bright links will be posted on our Facebook and LinkedIn group, so you can register to each and every event. And today, oh, during uh, the call, Ahmed will share key preparation records for job interviews and also demo key interview questions and answers. This is very important. We have to practice uh, what's being used uh, on the market and what they have been asking. Uh, and a little bit about Ahmed. Ahmed is a lifelong learner, servant leader, passionate to serve others and create impact. He's a professional business portfolio program project manager with more than 10 years worked in more than 14 countries and worked with high tech and telecom companies. Ahmed is a Canadian citizen nowadays, but he is an immigrant to Canada who faced a lot of challenges to return back to the market of moving here. He took this challenge positively and created a methodology to uh, short circuit the journey of career 
uh, landing jobs by using uh, strategies such as for M's uh, for success. So welcome, Ahmed, and the space is yours. Thank you, Mariana. Thanks everybody for showing up today. And again, you know, uh, this is, uh, you know, an opportunity for me to give back to those people who really helped me uh, during the time that I was unemployed. I was in your place uh, one day and, you know, I faced lots of challenges and I know it's tough, you know, like, you know, I feel what, you know, everybody is feeling at those moments. Uh, it's uh, not easy, but, you know, that's why we're here. You're not alone. We'll not leave you alone on this journey. We'll, we'll do what we can to help you. So, again, feel free to ask us questions. Feel free to, uh, you know, uh, get help from us. Mike uh, is a recruiter. He's helping us and he's willing to support you. If you want to send your resume to his way, you know, he can maybe guide you as well um you know he's working mostly in it but you know he may know friends on other fields as well mike sure. do you want to just give a quick uh, you know introduction about yourself uh, before I, I kick it off here no yeah certainly my name is uh, mike jaber with medic consulting and and i've been in the staffing industry now for 11 years and uh we do staff mostly in it but we've also staffed other uh, other roles or worked on other roles where it wasn't uh, it it could be in the medical profession etc and um, anybody who needs a hand in terms of guidance of where to look or or any help with any resume or, or whatsoever or words of encouragement please do reach out to me and uh, if, if I can't do it I'll find someone else that may be able to help you and of course the best teacher of all here is Ahmed he's been it's so great of him to uh, to help out with everything so uh, and I've known him for about five years now or six years had the pleasure of meeting him so uh, great Thank guy you. and uh, I can help in any way, just please reach out to me. Thank you, Mike. So today I, I have some slides, but I wanted this to be more interactive. So I will maybe not go through all the slides. I want to, you know, focus on the thing that you will come on camera and practice, you know, how do you really do the interviews? And you know, when the interview is more about the confidence, is more about, you know, what you really, you know, show as the body language. Uh, it's not about what you say mostly because, you know, whatever we say is 30% of the message uh, the body language is 70 percent so it's important that your body your tone of voice give that confidence level that is more important than the message the message is also important but you know your tone of voice and body language is is absolutely um you know critical here so today again i, I will go some very quick slides but again i will um do the session as an interactive more so i may not uh, skip i'm not sorry go through the whole slide. So the call is mostly uh, today is for immigrants, newcomers, you know, international students, people who lost their jobs, you know, uh, mostly IT. Uh, but again, you know, interview is, is something that is, uh, you know, uh, global. Uh, anyone who's searching for a job will definitely maybe go through an interview. Uh, I heard lately that, you know, some companies is working on getting the interviews without any humans. Uh, so you will be just, you know, uh, being on camera and you just uh, tell what, you know, the question they ask you about and they will record you. And then accordingly, they will tell you if you're hired or not, you know? So that's maybe the new uh, type of interview that is not, um, you know, we didn't face that yet. So uh, the world is changing. So before I go into the slides, I wanted to show you a quick video about a tough interview that happened uh, in that movie. And I, I just want to you to, you know, feel the situation here. Like, you know, um, Will Smith, he was uh, painting his uh, flat. He had a parking ticket. He got arrested and he has an interview time that he has to run to to uh, attend that interview. So I will, I will let you see that, um, how he handled that interview. And I want you to maybe prepare yourself to come on camera and do something a little bit similar, you know, again, not, not similar to Will Smith, but something that you can act with confidence in the same manner. So uh, we'll uh, start the video right now. Gardner, how are you? Good morning. Chris Gardner. Chris Gardner, good to see you again. 
Chris Gardner, pleasure. I've been sitting out there for the last half hour trying to come up with a story that would explain my being here dressed like this. And, and I wanted to come up with a story that would demonstrate qualities that I'm sure you all admire here, like, like earnestness or diligence and team playing to something. And I couldn't think of anything. So the truth is, I was arrested for failure to pay parking tickets. Parking tickets? <laughs> and I ran all the way here from the, the Polk station, the police station. What were you doing before you were arrested? I was uh, painting my apartment. Is it dry now? <laughs> I hope so. Jay says you're pretty determined. Oh, he's been waiting outside the front of the building with some 40-pound gizmo for over a month. He said you're smart. I like to think so. And you want to learn this business? Yes, sir, I want to learn this business. Have you already started learning on your own? Absolutely. Jay. Yes, sir. How many times have you seen Chris? You know, I don't know. One too many, apparently. Is he ever dressed like this? No. No. Jacket and tie. First in your class in school? High school? Yes, sir. How many in the class? Uh, Twelve. It was a small town. <laughs> I'll say. But I was also first in my radar class in, in the Navy, and that was a class of 20. Can I say something? Um, I'm the type of person, if you ask me a question and I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you that I don't know. But I bet you what? I know how to find the answer, and I will find the answer. Is that fair enough? Chris, what would you say if a guy walked in for an interview without a shirt on? And I hired him. What would you say? He must have had on some really nice pants. <laughs> okay so you know this is just to, uh, to refresh you about you know how tough sometimes uh, <clears throat> interviews can be and uh, you know um, we don't want to be uh, will smith for sure that's not easy but you know definitely uh, i want just to to reflect on some of the messages here uh, how he manage you know some of the um, environment and the culture within the interview so he, he felt that you know they are not really um, linking to his story and he has to say something to connect them back so you know he came up with this you know that he's the type of the personality that if he doesn't know uh, something and he will tell you that he doesn't know it but he will get you the answer so and but you know this is what also recruiters or interviewers will ask you you know they, they don't want you to know everything they don't expect you to know everything but they expect you to try and, and find a solution somehow within your area you know so that you don't get stuck and the tone of the voice the confidence that you know he was speaking about this is what you need to show in your interview you know he was in a tough situation he just came out of jail you know coming running you know he was not in the in the best situation ever but he still showed confidence. He still showed that he can still deliver. And, and he's he has already been persistent. He was showing up, you know, in front of the office, you know, asking the, the guy to uh, get him into the interview. So, you know, he had some uh, previous, um, let's say, experience or, or previous, uh, you know, impressions uh, about himself, how, how he's really persistent about this. So I, I want you maybe now, if we can, uh, you know, get somebody to, Come on screen and just, you know, say a few words about themselves. Just again, introducing themselves, if possible, you know, just as a test, you know, if I'm if I'm doing this uh, like, you know, for uh, for an interview, I want to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Ahmed Zaid. I'm a project manager and I'm passionate about helping people uh, about delivering projects. So again, you know, you don't need to be speaking a lot, just few words, but I want you to do it with confidence. So if, if someone wants to volunteer and come on camera and just, you know, say a few words about themselves, uh, that would be great. Okay, Elaine, I see you. Raise your hand. Do you want to volunteer? Yeah, I can go. 
Cool. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Elaine. Uh, I used to work as a, a senior financial analyst, and I'm passionate about finding solutions for problems. Very good, Elaine. Very good. I really like your confidence. I really like, you know, the way that you told the story. And uh, it's simple, you know, you just need to show confidence. You know, you don't really need to put complex words, but you just show confidence. Does anyone wants to share some feedback about what Elaine uh, shared? You know, do you um, have any observation or, or thoughts to Elaine uh, about what she she mentioned? I just what? wanted to say just about that clip with Will Smith. Like that's a very powerful moment right there. And and what he did turn all the negative comments or the negative remarks into positive remarks. You know, he didn't have a suit on. He he had an answer for that. He uh, he was tops in his class, small class. But then he came back and said that I was tops in my class in the Navy or something similar to that. And I was 20 in the class. So you always turn a negative into a positive in, you know, any type of an interview. If you've done, if you haven't done what they're asking you in regards to that specific skill set or specific role, but you've done something very similar, instead of saying, no, I haven't done it, say, I haven't done this, but I've done this, this, this. It's very similar to it, and it wouldn't take me long to get up to speed. So you turn a negative into a positive, which is very, very good. So mm -hmm. he did that in the movie, which was a powerful scene, very powerful. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. This is a good point. Anyone else want to come and, and again share again? You know, this is the community is mostly to help you. So if you're not able to come on, on camera and, and, and you do this, you know, it's a practice. You know, you will. Yes, I see somebody raised uh, their hand. So do you want to come? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm from Atlantic Canada. From New Brunswick. Nice. Uh, yeah, I want to introduce myself a little bit. So my name is Anara. Uh, right now I'm taking my class um, at the, uh, the college, local college, uh, business administration accounting. So uh, I have a huge experience working as an accountant and uh, at the bank uh, 10 years. So um, I have uh, I have the experience and I want to apply my knowledge and experience here in Canada. So I go to the college and right now I'm looking for a summer job, summer job in account uh, for accountant. Excellent. Thank you. Anna. Thank you. This is really great. Thank you. Anyone else? Again, you know, I just want you to be comfortable and, and you know, whenever you practice it, this is will make you more confident on, on doing it really when you come to the real interview. So, you know, it's it's not difficult, but if you don't do it, it's not going to happen. So if you want to come again, we can maybe have someone more uh, and, uh, you know, we can continue with the slides. Thomas, go ahead. Thomas. Yeah. Uh, so uh, good night, everyone. Uh, so uh, my name is Thomas. Uh, I'm working. Uh, I'm from the finance uh, field. Uh, currently doing a CSC Canadian Secret course uh, to improve my skills. Uh, I also enjoy work with people and uh, finding solutions uh, to help them. Thank you, Thomas. Good one. Okay, so I guess you know I will will continue on. I will just go through some slides, but again, you know, be prepared because I'm going to ask you to come on camera. I will insist on that because this is how we will learn. You know, this is really. How we'll we'll do this together, and this is how we will get hired. You know, if you're not comfortable doing this, you you will not get hired. You know, to be honest. So just uh, try to become comfortable doing this, uh, and whenever and there is a chance again um, in a few minutes. So okay, why do uh, you know companies hire? Uh, you know, we want to just understand what's the reason behind it. So. You know, the hiring manager wants to validate just, you know, if you can really uh, fit with their personality, like, you know, are you really going to work together or you will be always, uh, you know, in a fight, you know, nobody wants to hire someone who is always going to be in conflict with. So they want to make sure that, you know, that person, you know, matches the other hiring manager. We, they want also to know that you can really fit the job requirements. You know, there are certain kind of skill sets that they need. So we want you to 
We want them, they want you to uh, fit those uh, requirements. They want you also to fit that corporate culture. You know, believe it or not, every company in the whole world have a culture. You know, there is certain things that they do, certain things that they don't do. And you know, when you are coming new and you don't know those culture, you may take some time to fit within that culture. So it's you know how smart you are to you know get to know that culture quickly and adapt to it you know because again it's just like going to canada immigrating to canada it's a new culture each company you you'll be hired in it's another culture so it's as if you're really immigrating so you need to understand you know do they say hello in the morning before they start their job do they you know uh, take tea and coffee together maybe go to tim horton maybe they they barbecue uh, in the weekends you know there is certain kind of thing that they continuously do as a corporate. So you may want to figure out if, if you fit with that or not, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the other thing that is very, very important, you know, the hiring manager definitely have a team. Like they have like three, four or five people. Can you fit with on those people or you will, you know, make those people um, complain uh, that you are making some problems to them, you know. So it's very important that you, um, you know, mingle within the team and, and and you adapt with them. Uh, Mike, do you do you want to add anything to that? It's true. You you've got you've got to be the the manager, the hiring manager will will try and gauge your personality, like you say, so that he's not gonna you know bring somebody in that's gonna upset the apple cart. You know, they they have a good team. They, there's good culture there. There's good uh, interaction with the team. They don't need anyone to come in and uh, and not. Uh, and not join the team as a team player and and that's key so and not only that when you're being interviewed by the manager you've got to be uh like very personable smile and and uh, one good trick is is that pretend you're speaking to your friends that'll that'll make you not as nervous and then you'll open up and you'll chat more so if you're discussing technology i always say to the you know the, the you know the consultant or the contractor or the candidate sorry Make sure that you're speaking technology with them like you're speaking with your friends. Just you're talking technology, that's all. Just make sure you know what you're saying and don't say anything that or try and make up. You know, if you don't know it, don't, don't make anything up. Just move on. But uh, yeah, relax. Think of your friends and and be comfortable in it because they're human just like you are. Yes, true. So, you know. Thank you, Mike. You're Any question? Thomas, you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, I just uh, would like to add something. So one thing uh, that I usually do is like uh, when I have an interview, one or two hours before the interview, I usually when I have, when me and uh, my wife will have time, we just go and uh, we do like a mock uh, interview just to get in the mood and uh, check uh, if the light is good, if the camera is good, like those things to make sure we, we do not have a problem. And the actually, uh, I think last week, I had an interview that I had a problem because it was a, a new app from the company. I don't know if, uh, if you guys know. Uh, it's a, I think it's WebEx. WebEx. I haven't, yeah, I haven't used it before. Yes, it's common, Cisco. Cisco. Yeah, it's from Cisco. So uh, during, before, uh, I. I tried with my wife everything went okay but when i was doing the interview we had a problem with the audio and everything so we found a solution like uh, i was uh, watching the video and then we we made the call through the cell phone and like uh, i get i get this option for the yeah. hr person so yeah. just try to uh, my suggestion is like i uh, try to Prepare before, and uh, yes, if something point. goes wrong, just come down and try to find a solution. Like that. Yeah, good, good, good thing, uh, Thomas, that you did. You know, again, you know, to uh, our you know employers, they expect us to work with any kind of app. You know, Teams, Zoom, Webex, uh, whatever that is. Uh, you know, you need to be ready. So you may want to try it before the call, at least one or two hours. Uh, go ahead, Ahmed. Thank you, Ahmed, for the amazing uh, session and Mike. Uh, 
Something else, just a small comment. Now we are in COVID and most of the, the interviews are with cameras. So you need to make sure that the camera, the lighting, the, the sitting around you is, is, is tested and verified before you go to the interview. Like I will give you an example. When you look at Mike, what do you feel now? Okay, he's so relaxed. You know, he's like he's, he's, he's in his comfort zone, but he's not showing the interest, you know, that the love for, for the interview or the company. <laughs> Look at Ahmed Zaid. I can't see his body. You know, I see just a little bit of his face. Okay, and that's it. I don't see his chest. I don't see the surrounding. And it is so busy in the back. Okay. <laughs> If I look at uh, Thomas, only your face, man. It is it is pretty, but you know you need to show more of your body. The best setting you will find it is with Mariana. Okay, it's showing her face, her hair, her chair. You know she's set straight as she is really doing an interview. So it's something that you have to practice. And again, as you said, Thomas, try to practice with your wife. You know, sit straight, dress well for the interview. Make sure that you know your body language. If you're going to move your hand, is going to look look right uh, if you are using teams don't use the background there is sitting background like like the one ahmed is using sometime if you are moving your hand it will not show okay so just practice this stuff before the interview that will make it much easier for you thank, thank you. you good point thank, thank you, you ahmed and i look comfortable don't i relax you are very comfortable <laughs> my friend <laughs> very relaxed you just had your dinner i'll tell you something ahmed Ready it's for bed. great to see you again. You know what? Life is great. Enjoy and seize every moment. Exactly. Be relaxed. Okay. Coming back to the slides. So, you know, uh, who interviews? You know, again, um, you know, you know, there is sometimes different types of interviews. Mostly the first one is going to be either a recruiter or an HR person who will just, you know, check your behavior, check your personality, you know, nothing really related to the skills, uh, the technical skills. It's most about your behavior and you know your personality. Uh, the second, maybe a type, maybe a team member, somebody that you know the manager wants you to uh, check if you know you can mingle within that team. So they put you in in, a, in an interview with one of the colleagues uh, or your future colleagues just to see if you put an, a good impression on them or not. You know, so you know when they decide, they already know you um, before. And the third one is just the hiring manager. And again, they want to just, you know, check your technical skills, soft skills, and, and if you can blend within that team. So when you prepare for an interview, you just think about those four words, you know, uh, what do you want them to feel? What do you want them to think? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to do? And mostly the do, they should hire you, <laughs> you know, that should be <laughs> clear, you know, so the, you definitely want them to hire you. That's the do uh, thing here. But, you know, those simple uh, few words will make it easy for you to prepare for your interview uh, so that you put yourself in that, uh, you know, uh, situation. Is that clear enough? Any questions so far? Ahmed, are you raising your hand or that's from the previous one? Maybe that's from Mari Mariana, go ahead. Uh, I just want to add, it's very relevant what you said, and um, it's a lot. It seems to be a lot, but we have to think what message we want to send. If I'm looking for a data analysis position, I may want to be, uh, depending on the company, obviously, but I may want to be a little bit more serious, more focused and more data driven. But if I'm, I'm going to work with customers, so I have to be a bit more friendly and I have to use maybe a little bit more hands and be more, you know, so deciding what, how you're going to adapt, it helps when you know someone from the company or when you search a little bit of about their culture. So we will help you to go through, through what do you want them to think and what do you want them to know and do. Thank you, Mariana. Good point. Okay, so we'll jump to the types of interview. So there is several types, you know, there is a panel, you know, like three people or maybe two people uh, who could be interviewing you or it could be one on one, just one person who just interviewing you. It could be behavioral or situational, you know, it could be virtual on site. Now everything is mostly virtual because of COVID. So you may want to, you know, get comfortable being in camera again and, and you know, 
as Ahmed mentioned, the setup, you know, your chest, your your face, your lightings, all those things you need to check before your internet connection, your uh, app. Uh, so uh, there could be a serial of interviews, like, you know, one to three interviews in the same day. They are maybe spaced by half an hour. So you, you, they want to see you under pressure in different times and, and different colleagues so that, you know, the hiring team uh, could really decide if, if you're a good fit or not. You know, in Microsoft, we do this uh, most of the time. We do a serial uh, interview, uh, three uh, interviews in, in one day. Uh, the next one, maybe a technical or exam. You know, if you're a software developer, for example, there is a multiple exams that you need to show off in coding. Uh, you know, the, they might ask you, how do you code this? And how do you, why, how, why did you think that way as well while coding? So, you know, there is, depending on your profile, depending on which role you're uh, targeting, there is uh, a different interview type. Uh, one of the interview types is lunch. They take you to lunch to eat together and they ask you questions during that lunch. So they want to see how do you really uh, eat? How do you really, you know, uh, sit? How do you, you know, those kind of things will show you on your reality. You cannot fake those ones uh, in lunch. And I've been like in two uh, interviews as lunch before. And uh, it's not, not difficult, but it's, uh, it's a new thing, uh, to be honest, you know. Mariana, you have a question? Right. Yeah, I have a question and then there is a question on the chat too. So uh, maybe uh, this question I would direct for you and maybe Mike as well. Uh, what are the main difference if we think of an actual interview between the behavioral and situational questions during the interview? Mike, do you want to take that? Well, one? well, behavioral. This, they'll see how you react to the questions, and and they'll they'll gauge, you know, whether you, uh, uh, you know, your behavior towards whether you you get nervous or fidgety, or you know, you get you you know, you get excited or whatever the case may be. And situational questions is that they'll probably put you. Uh, they'll they'll discuss if you're in this situation, how would you deal with this customer who's not very happy, or how would you deal with a coworker who. Uh, didn't, uh, you know, has too many bugs in his code or et cetera. And they'll give you some certain situational questions and they'll see how you'll be able to figure that out and how you can uh, deal with it. And um, and I've seen it before where some, you know, if, if a guy's dealing with a customer, you know, he'll say, I'll calm the customer down. We know what the issue is. I'll go back to my support team. We'll come up with a solution and we'll get that rectified shortly, you know, for you. And that's what they want to hear in that situation. But they'll ask you different situational questions depending on the role, and you've got to be able to, you know, speak to them and and speak to them confidently and you know, gen, you know, genuinely. So yeah, yeah. One of, one of the questions, situation, maybe you know, if you are a fruit, which one would you choose and and why? You know, this is you know out of the blue. You you, you may not think about it before the interview, but this could be one of the situational questions. They just want you to react to you know <laughs> unknown situation yeah. okay uh there is one question here in the chat is there any certain approach depending on the various types of interview yeah so each interview has a different uh, preparation style and and you may want to uh, you know try to practice those types so for example for the panel interview you have to have an eye contact with all uh, the people who are in the panel. You cannot really just focus on one person. Even if it's a, a, you know, a virtual interview, you still have to show that you're looking to each one of them. They will see this, that you know, you're really uh, making an eye contact uh, with people. So you know, again, each interview has a different preparation and different setup that you may want to uh, go through it. Yeah, I would even add to the panel uh, now that we are online, maybe try to call the person by the name and then say uh, this person responded to your question, like Ahmed responded to your question. So they know that you are interacting with each of them. And the yeah. panel, it's a, it's a, a little bit stressful, but uh, it's a good practice too. So you have yeah. to respond to three different situations. Yeah. And they could put you at, under stress, you know, so they, maybe they will play together that somebody will never smile. You know, they, they, they intentionally make that person never smile to you, but, you know, they want to put you under pressure and see, like, how, how can you handle this in their interview? So, you know, 
you feel, oh, whoa, he's not really smiling or she's not really smiling, then there might be something wrong. So, you know, you may want to think about those situations. Anything you to add, Mike? Yeah, all you can do is really do your best. Uh, and you, you try and read people. And, and I've seen it both where people, you know, were really serious. And I sat in a couple of interviews, technical interviews, and I'm not a technical person at all. And, and they would ask you, you know, some technical questions and then they'd answer them and then they'll say, OK, get up to the whiteboard and explain to me how you did it. OK, and then they'll look at the resume and they'll pick out another point and ask him about that. Um, one was serious and one was, you know, like a little more friendlier. But, you know, just to one was playing against the other. And the other interview that I saw that I sat in again, was, which was virtual, and it was like, OK, what have you done? You've done this, this, this. Explain to me how you did it, you know. And it was more at ease. There was no stress. They laughed and, you know, it, you know, it was good. It, it varies with the person conducting the interview, you know. Yeah. It really, truly is. And you've got to gauge that early and, and adapt to it, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point, Mike. And uh, it happened to me, too. I had one that, oh, uh, this is uh, the manager and he's a tech guy. And then I went through the interview with the person B and then the manager came at the end and said, OK, I see in your resume that I have these specific experience. Can you tell me about that? So he was very picky with the specific questions. It was maybe a good call back up. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. there is another question here, Ahmed. Could you go yeah. over the lunch interview a bit? Sure. Yeah. So the lunch interview, you know, normally the manager will uh, or, or the hiring manager will take you to, you know, to a restaurant or, or some place near to the office and, and they will invite you to lunch. And, and you know, normally they want to see, you know, like, you know, do you uh, feel comfortable sitting in a, in a lunch space and, and speaking about work and, and you're really reacting normal? You, you're on your, um, you know, your self-authentic way. You don't really overreact you don't really oversell you try to you know uh, sit calm and, and you know feel like as if this is like your friends you know you speak about with your friends and you try as much as possible to make conversation make relationship with with the hiring manager or whoever is interviewing you that you know they feel comfortable speaking more about you so it, it becomes a little bit informal and a little bit you know um not really um, you know, stressful uh, for them and for you. And to, to be honest, you know, the interview could be stressful to the interviewer themselves too. So you may want to make it easy for them, you know, that you're not really stressed as well. Uh, Ahmed, you raised your hand. Do you want to add anything? Uh, it is very tricky uh, because you have to watch what you're going to order. OK, uh, don't order something that will make a mess or stick to your teeth while you are talking because uh, like uh, because again, you're eating and talking at the same time. You are forced to eat and talk. So be very careful what you're going to order, uh, how you're going to eat what you ordered. OK, don't overdo it and don't uh, go on the very light side. OK, so it, it, there is again like uh, it's one of the most uh, Annoying interviews for me is lunch interview, okay? Because I like to eat the food, but at the same time I cannot enjoy it because I have to focus on the interview, okay? So, so uh, like don't or like don't don't order the big burger. We're going to have it in your hand and start chewing on it and something light, you know, like maybe salad and and Some and soup and is the best, yeah. Don't soup. go hungry. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, Thomas. Yeah, don't go hungry. <laughs> OK, any other questions, Mariana? Yes, uh, and very good point. Uh, I've never been to one, but for sure we remember that tip. Um, OK, we have uh, one more one that uh, the person uh, Anara is saying, I think it's the most challenging interview, the lunch interview. And Elaine is asking how to respond when the interview says that you are overqualified so during the interview. So this is a good question and, and, and it depends on, on you know, your uh, status, like, you know, what made the interviewer reach to that conclusion? This is, you know, one thing that you need to first address, you know, what made him or her reach that you're overqualified? Is it because of your degrees, maybe in the resume, maybe because you spoke uh, very strong about yourself and the thing that you really, you know, you're going to be 
way too fast for the current uh, job or the current profile. So, you know, it depends on, 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 you know, what made him or her reach to that conclusion. You know, this is how you will address this. There is no real recipe of, of the answer. It depends on the situation. It depends on, on, you know, how did they went to this conclusion. So and, and usually and usually what happens is a sort of interrupter, Ahmed, it should be HR should have caught it depending on your education or your years of, you know, your your years of experience to, to determine whether you are qualified for that role or not. And if you're overqualified, then I, I don't know, you know, why they would have, in, you know, set up the interview because yeah. obviously you're not quite a fit for the position. Yeah, according to them, it was because my work experience in Brazil, but I don't have experience in Canada, so I was trying to, to get one. Yeah, but yeah. still, it doesn't make a difference what your experience is. Yeah. Like right now, I'm looking for software developers, and if they come out of Brazil, they're good, very good software developers. They're very good network engineers in IT, and if they see that on the resume, it's very attractive because they're very good. Uh, I mean, and whether you've worked in the Middle East or South America or Asia, as long as it's a good country, which, you know, uh, it's usually the experience is very good. So um, and it should be counted. So it, you, sh you should know yourself whether you'd be overqualified for the position, um, you know, and they should know, obviously. Yeah. So you, your question is a good segue to the next slide, which is, you know, what comes in, in the mind of the interviewers, you know? What's their risks? What's their mindset? So, you know, their main risks, if they if they hire you today and then you leave in, in one month or, or one week or two, two months, this looks very bad for them. You know, they took a lot of steps until they reached that you hire, you get hired. And if you leave them so soon, then that's a bad thing that they didn't do a good homework uh, to choose you. So that's why, you know, they may tell you you're overqualified because you know they think that you may after getting hired you will jump to another job very quickly okay so they, they also want to make sure that you don't isolate yourself from the team you know sometimes people get hired then they they want to just work on their own they don't really want to make any contact or relationship with their peers mm -hmm. their colleagues and this is tough you know like you have to be a human being. At the end of the day, you're a human being dealing with human beings and you have to make some good relationship with them. Uh, you do not build that uh, relationship. That's not good. Uh, you do not perform the tasks uh, that they ask you to do. You know, this is mostly technical. Um, sometimes they could think that you could replace the hiring manager. So if you're really overqualified, they may think that you could replace them, you know, and that's a risk for them. So they will never hire someone who could replace them, you know. So if you show very strong skills, this is not a good thing, you know, if you really want that job. <laughs> so if you have to, you know, be confident, but not very strong too. Mariana, go ahead. Uh, I just want to, about that overqualified during the interview, I just want to share my experience very quickly here. So I faced uh, in different ways this kind of situation, when, especially when I moved. Uh, the first thing is to do the root cause analysis and find what's the main cause that made them think that you were overqualified. And then go back to the resume and see how you can adapt your resume to that specific position. And the third thing, and this really happened to me, was I went to an interview. I did my whole homework. I adapted my resume. I got to the manager. And then they just I started speaking about something that I love to do, and my work experience is all based, but it was way more than what they were looking for. And then I love so much that just stopped talking. I, I couldn't stop talking. I was just like, yes, I have this experience. I love this. I love that. And she said, oh, when you open that position, then you may apply because I can see that you are not a fit, like you are overqualified to the position that you actually applied. Even though when we saw your resume, it was a fit. But now talking to you, I see that you have so much more to offer that you won't be happy in that position. Uh, it hurt me at the time, but I understood at the end. So it's just a matter of 
If I do the root cause analysis of both situations, one was a strict resume. So the resume uh, workshops that we do based on that. And the other one is uh, how you are going to present yourself, which is what we are talking today. So if it's a entry level, then we have to think about what uh, what experiences, what examples we are going to give. So then it matches with what they are looking for. And also ask, do you, I am I a really good fit for that one for that job? Because sometimes it's just not a good choice. But this happened to me. I just wanted to share. Yeah. And, and remember, you know, the interview is a muscle. You know, the skill is a muscle that you need to build. It's just like going to the gym. You know, to build the muscle, you need to do so many interviews to build that muscle and become very comfortable. You know, you know what to say, how to say it, your tone of voice, your 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 body language, all those things will not come, uh, you know, without being prepared. You know, you, if you if you're not in shape, you will not show that um, you know confidence. So it took me yeah, two years. Yeah, no, I know. Again, I it took me a long time too. You know, I I had to fail some res uh, interviews to succeed in, in other ones. You know, you know, tr trust me. You know, I, I did like one of my uh, uh, employers. I did like four interviews. Uh, in in several weeks, and I thought I'm gonna take the job. You know, this is gonna come, yeah. no matter. And it didn't come. You know, and there was another interview that I did in 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and I got hired the next day. You know, <laughs> so it 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 doesn't really um, make any sense. You know, like, you know, you do four interviews, you don't get hired, and you do 15 minutes interview, and you get hired. You know, like my job with Microsoft. You know, I I got. <laughs> Initially, a contract for one month, one month only, and then it was extended to three months, then another six months, and then another six months, and then I became full time. So you see, you know, those things happen uh, because, you know, sometimes the companies want to see you, how you will do in, in short periods. Are you comfortable? Yeah. And if you're comfortable, then yes, this is the right person that we want to hire for long term. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... We have a question just before. Uh, yeah. Anara is asking, uh, don't be overconfident. What does it mean? Uh, Anara, do you want to maybe explain what's your question here? Yeah. So when Mariana was talking about uh, her fault, uh, when, he, when she said that she can do such and such and everything, so and I have a question. For myself, so we don't don't need to show that we are overconfident regarding this job, right? Yeah. yeah again, if, if you. So you know, I live in small place. There's that's in small city. There's an workplace is so limited, and I can't, you know, like you, um, practice. <laughs> and fail my interview <laughs> so that's why I need to know yeah, so how to behave <laughs> so do you want to take that one Mariana or should I uh, yeah I just wanna I just wanna say something about that small city and then I'll give it to you so um, nowadays with the online work I would say like you can apply to other regions and practice. Like I always encourage people within my network to say, go to interviews. If you get to an interview, go to interview. It's just a practice. If, you, if even if you don't, if you're not sure if you're gonna get the job or if you're gonna take the job, practice. It's a place to practice. So apply to other cities. I know that the city is small, but maybe you can see jobs in Toronto. You can see jobs in Ontario in general. That That's there the are some. Just yeah. for practicing, you mean? Yeah. No, even even if even if you got hired, you know. So again, most uh, of the jobs. Yeah. To, sorry. Online. You mean online? If I get yeah, online. most of the jobs now is online. You know, like you know, most of the current hiring, uh, you know, um, uh, jobs that I get online now, they tell me that it will be remote for at least maybe a year, and then you may come back to office after that year. So if right. you want to maybe get hired you just need to be comfortable being remote for some time yeah but i like personally i like to be uh 
you know, in the actual workplace. So interact and socialize because uh, with this COVID stuff, even I take my class at the college, I'm not with the student, I'm not with the instructor. I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of locked in my room, yeah. <laughs> if you understand me. Yeah, and sure. I really want to uh, work with people, with actual people. So that's why for me it's crucial to go outside. But uh, that's a good point. Thank you, Mariana. So I haven't thought about it, but I can practice online. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you know, you. unfortunately today, you know, with COVID, most of the jobs are online, uh, Anara. You know, like it's this is the normal. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, we have to you know um, live with that for some time, and maybe even after COVID goes away. Some jobs will stay remote, you know. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be maybe the new normal afterwards. So you may want to, you know, keep doing it uh, until you become comfortable. It's not easy, I know. Uh, like I'm, I'm, I like to stay with people um, most of the time, but you know, I had to do my job as well, you know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so we'll we'll go through again a quick a few slides, and then I will uh, show you another video. Then we'll do another demo, um, like a, a real interview. So you know, depending on those risks that comes in in the mind of, of the interviewer, you need to smile most of the time. You know, like you you need to really smile. You don't really need to look uh, <laughs> just you know um, not smiling because you know that doesn't make you really making a relationship with with people you know so smiling makes that easy that people like you you know and the eye contact is very important you know you need to look to the camera as if you know that camera is somebody who's really speaking to you your body language as, as Ahmed mentioned you, you need to you know um, make your chest high and, and you, you look uh, in and there is maybe like you know you need to put your hand like this and, and see like if, if this is how long between the um, space and your your head this is Great. how you should be yeah you know practice active listening you know don't rush into answering the questions you know always take time to understand the question because sometimes when you rush to answer it makes you f look like you, you're not answering the right question you know so take some time to understand and maybe ask them to rephrase if you didn't really get the the question you know if english is not your first language that's okay. Just, you know, by time, can you rephrase the question, you know, uh, so that I can answer you, yes. you know, yes. be authentic, you know, be yourself. Don't try to fake anything, you know, be yourself because this is what really will make you, you know, get the job. You know, they, they want to see somebody who's really real. They don't want to see somebody who's trying to be somebody else. <clears throat> and show that you're coachable. You know, what does it mean that you're coachable, that you can learn and you're, you you accept judgment you accept you know some guidance you know, that you're not stick to some practice you're not stick to some kind of uh, of direction and you don't really get coached because this is something that you know managers don't like they want to really help you if if you got stuck okay what makes a good interview again you know the preparation research people you know you need to know who you're speaking to what do they like? You know, do, do they like maybe golf? Do, do they like snorkeling? You know, try to find some ways to find commonalities uh, between you and those folks. Practice your introduction, practice your sales pitch and value proposition. Why are you the best person to get that job? You know, this should be clear in your mind. You know, what skills, what values you bring to that job? Test your technology. Test your internet, you know, those are very important. Uh, ways to build rapport with everyone, you know, staying calm and focused, you know. You know, sometimes they, they want to stress you, they want to put pressure on, for, on you that you become nervous. Uh, so they want to see how will you react if you let, like say, for example, when I go to a customer meeting, sometimes my customer makes me nervous, you know, in, in a real situation. So they want to test that, you know, are, are you going to, you know, uh, say words or, or, you know, tell them you, 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 you know, stupid or whatever, or you're going to stay calm and, and, and try to, you know, make the conversation and, and get still to the target of the job. 
And I don't want to spend time here. I, I want to move a little bit uh, faster. So think that you, you know, do's and don'ts, uh, you know, don't be stressed. Uh, you know, when we get stressed, sometimes the color of the face change. You know, the 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 eye contact is 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 very important. If you're just looking around uh, somewhere else, this is not good. This is a sign that you're not comfortable. This is a sign that you're not really um, ready. Uh, less is more. This is very important. You know, when when you speak, try to not to speak a lot because the more you speak, the more you make mistakes. You know, but again, you want to still show the value. You don't want to speak very less without showing the value. You want to speak less, but showing the value. Um, okay. Then again, the action verb at task result is very important. You know, when you get to be asked some questions, try to practice, you know, saying delivered, uh, demonstrated, collaborated, and then the task and then the result, you know, I, I delivered 10 projects uh, with a budget of uh, 20K that resulted in a cost, uh, you know, a reduction of 20% to my company. So you, you phrase your words in that way. Okay, now I want to show you a quick video and then we'll do another demo. Okay. I think I have to reshare. Give me a second here. Just in the meantime, yeah. while you're doing that, uh, just sharing some tips that I, I normally, I'm careful and I try to avoid or I have to help me is I try to avoid. Crucial part of the okay. job. Go ahead. Okay. Job search. An interview can make or break an opportunity. So to help you really prepare, we're going to dissect and analyze an entire interview from start to finish. I'll be sprinkling in a mix of tips about body language, etiquette, and how to answer common questions. Like when exactly does the interview start? How do you deal with nerves? And how soon can you follow up? For years, athletes have used science and data analysis to improve. Now, we are doing the same for job seekers everywhere. This is Job Science. Meet Anya, a recent grad majoring in business administration. She's interviewing for an entry-level project management position. Note her posture, head up, shoulders pulled back, no slouching and no laid backness. The interview begins the minute you walk into the building. Anya treats everyone in the office with respect while keeping eye contact. From security personnel to receptionists, anyone you run into on your way in could be asked to give feedback on you. It's normal to be nervous. When nerves kick in, the natural human response is to take short breaths and breathe faster. Stay calm by taking a deep breath before entering. Hold it, count to three, and then slowly breathe out. Pause. First, ace those introductions. Greet everyone in a way that is authentic to you, like, hey, nice to meet you, and then say their name. That one always works. You know, you're more likely to remember their name if you say it out loud when you first meet. A lot of the time, small talk comes up before any questions. It's good to have a few current events or topics in mind. You can't possibly predict what they're going to ask, but you can practice answering the common ones. Like, why do you want to work here? What makes you unique? Let's see what our interviewer asks. So I want to hear more. Tell me a little about your experience and what you'd bring to this role. Pause. When this is asked, they're looking to learn what makes you stand out. Be honest with your answers. That means having to pause and think for a second, that is all right. Think about your past experiences and how the role lines up with your future goals. It never hurts to be honest. Great question. Ever since I was young, I've always been the organized one in my family. Whether it was helping my parents schedule vacations or color coordinating my closet, 
Naturally, that lifestyle got me here, project management. I've been a people person for as long as I can remember. Plain and simple, I love team building and making sure everyone has a part. Just the other month. Ooh, just really quick, don't speak negatively about previous places you've worked. Instead, talk about what you've learned. I helped lead a team of five to deliver a three-week sales project a few days ahead of schedule. I'd love to bring these things here. Perfect. A response like this not only answers the question, but also shows off her personality. But remember, there's no one right way to interview and answer questions. Be yourself and let your personality shine. Be aware of your movements. Practice polite, confident body language. Subtly miming your interviewer's posture can actually create a sense of connection. Of all places, unnecessary movements are hard to ignore in an interview. Whether it's tapping your fingers or bouncing your leg, be aware and stay present. Hey, it's been great chatting so far. I guess my last question is, do you have any questions for me? Ooh, this is a hot one. Make sure to have a short list of questions for your employer in your back pocket. Ask the questions you would if you got the job. If tomorrow was your first day, what would you want to know from the manager? Even if you don't have any burning questions, asking a few shows that you did your homework and that you really care. Some include, what do you like best about working here? What are some mistakes people have made in this position? What is a goal you're currently working toward? How will my performance be evaluated? Well, I did read that you're expanding your software team next quarter. I'm curious how you plan to carry that out. The interview isn't actually over. Always follow up within 24 hours with a thank you email to the hiring manager. This can be a quick note simply thanking them for their time or a longer one that elaborates on some of the things you talked about. It's key to leaving a lasting impression. This was the breakdown of an interview. How did that go? It was great. Um, we have a question here. Uh, yeah. Shaking hands is still relevant during pandemic? So definitely nobody shakes hand during pandemic. So, you know, uh, it's again, health regulations now is affecting all of us. So, you know, if you go on site uh, and that's going to be rare also, you know, you shouldn't shake hands, uh, you know, because they, they may not even offer it uh, as well. OK, so now I, I want to maybe again uh, do a bit of practice. I know we're on time, but I just want to maybe ask if somebody's you know, um, comfortable coming camera and maybe answer one of those questions that, you know, you will definitely uh, get at least one or two from those questions during interview. So if you want to come on camera and, uh, you know, we can help you, you know, telling you, yes, this is really good or, or you know, maybe you could just improve this, improve that, then that would help us all. Um, does anyone wants to come and practice uh, and, you know, enjoy this? Um, you know, friendly uh, community. Can the person choose the question or you're yeah. going to choose the question? Yeah, okay. choose any question, you know, whatever question you feel like uh, answering, just go for it. Anyone? I can go up to question. Okay, go ahead, Thomas. Brave guy. <laughs> So, uh, what are my goals for the future? So, uh, I would say my goal to uh, it's to work in this company and uh, uh, learn from this company, grow with this company, and uh, in the future, I wanna hear from my customers and co-workers uh, how wonderful it's work uh, by my side, uh, and uh, yeah, that's my goal for the next two or five years: growing the company and uh, help my co-workers and customers. Yeah, it's good. You know, you, you may want to just think about it from the way that, you know, they want to understand, like, what's your passion? The, 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 the idea about this question is they want to see if you're going to, you know, want to stay in the company for a long time or you want to maybe leave. Uh, so they just asking you an indirect question to see if you really have a plan to stay with the company for some time. So you, you got that uh, right answer and, and uh, you know, this is how to show that you really want to continue and grow with them. You maybe you want to be promoted later on to another position and, you know, continue working with that company. Good one, Thomas. Anyone else want to come and practice?
and this is your chance you know I, I if I if I were with you I would have definitely come on camera Michelle I see you coming do you want to practice any question you're mute Michelle if you want to unmute I would like to to ask you a question go ahead okay I worked for 20 years in a bank and yeah. I I finished it I was a, a manager uh, but I had only one employee just one okay. uh, other than my agent. and when I arrive in, in Halifax I will I will uh, uh, search for entry-level job how do I position a, that I was a manager and now I want a, a entry-level job how I, I will say what I, I have to say to them so first of all, I, I want to ask you why. Why you do you think? Me, why do you think you should go for an entry level? Because nobody knows me. That's okay, but you know, if you have the skills and you have, uh, you know, um, you know, um, a value to deliver as a manager, you should still try for a manager. You know, when I came to Canada, I was a manager. I was a program manager. You know, and some people told me you should not go for that high and it's okay you know you may want to go a little bit but not for an entry level you know you shouldn't you know treat yourself as if you're just coming from college because you definitely have experience if you go in that route you will be overqualified they will know that from the beginning so you will not get the job so and and you will be frustrated because you accepted something that you don't really want to and they even didn't accept you so this is not going to be good for you. So what I recommend for you is to find maybe a middle management, not an entry, not a not a senior. So it becomes, you know, like some kind in, in between that you can show some of your skills and, and you're able to go uh, higher in, in your a career. A team lead, a team lead instead a of a manager. Lead, for example, yeah. <clears throat> Um, can I add something? Just because I'm 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 doing the same thing uh, as she's doing, I'm going for the bank field. So here in Canada, uh, certifications for bank are very uh, important. So Michelle, I can help you because we I know we have a WhatsApp group only for bankers. Uh, most are of them are Brazilians. So I'm, I'm there, so you can add me on the LinkedIn and I will help with that. But for sure, uh, if you go manager here, you're going to need some uh, certification. Uh, the good thing is uh, the most common certifications from CSI, that, that's a Canadian Secret Institute. They are online most, so you can uh, start right now in Brazil, do everything online, even your exam. And uh, you can arrive here with uh, the most common one of them is uh, IFC, and the other one is a uh, CSC. I'm doing, I'm currently doing the CSC, but you can do uh, IFC too. So I can like, we can connect and I can help you with that. Yeah. So, so you see, this is the beauty of the community, Michelle. You know, you may want to connect offline with Thomas and make yeah. another call and go through those things together. This is how this community can help people you know so again we because i don't want to spend much time on on, on your uh, case uh, because of the others but you know you need to maybe make a call with thomas and go through those things so that you learn it is that okay yeah thank you thomas thank Very you good. thank you thomas anyone else want to come lila do you want to volunteer maybe no? Okay. I can uh, know it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, I will answer why do you wanna leave in your job? Well, I was working in financial field in Brazil and I'm currently work as a cleaner, evening cleaner. And I think I can do better than that. So that's why I'm I wanna leave my job. Okay. That's a good one, but you know maybe you want to change it in a way that they want to understand why uh, you know if if you join them you will not leave them this is what you know the, the main 
you know, question behind it. So you may want to still show them that you you you're getting promoted. You know, you want to go to your back to your career. You're doing this just because it's temporary, and you want to go back to your career. This is not you know your your um, um, profession, but. <laughs> Is Your audio is not working. Yeah, yeah I do. He's, he's frozen. frozen. Um, okay. So I will continue until he gets back. Thomas, you have something? No. no? Okay. Um, there is a question here. Asking salary questions is tough. When and how can we talk about that? So maybe Mike wants to address that while uh, yes, and with 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 my space that I'm working in, usually the the salary is is discussed ahead of time, and and so when we do submit a candidate, we submit it with the cost of the candidate, whether it's a a perm position or whether it's a contract role. Everything's up front. Uh, the last thing you want to do is get into a position where um, you know you've gone through maybe two or three rounds of interviews. And then ask you, you know, and then they make you an offer of, I don't know, maybe fifteen or twenty thousand dollars less than what should be for that, you know, for that position or what they feel that you're worth, and you know, you're worth more sometimes. And so uh, usually that's discussed, you know, ahead of time. So there's no surprises at the end. So that, uh, can you, you hear know, me? Yeah, we kept going with Mike here. We you go, you went frozen, so. He's answering yeah. a question here. So, my internet doesn't so, so that's no, that's so. So that's basically it, you know. And you yeah. and you've got to you've got to know what the job is going to pay when you first apply. You know, you're not going to apply for anything that's who's that guy walking around there? <laughs> 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 the video camera. It's got to be. <laughs> Anyways. So, so yeah. th that's my experiences in it, and you know what? And sometimes you feel uncomfortable asking what the, what the, you know, what the salary expectations are, but you want to know ahead of time also. So, um, some uh, tips for that. Uh, maybe in the first interview, if uh, you haven't, you know, when you fill the form, and then they may ask you, what's your expectation? So you just match with the. Um, salary in the market if you don't have an actual expectation if they, you don't and then in the first interview with hr which is just matching your uh resume they don't ask maybe you can leave a little bit to talk about uh later but one tip that i give to people and works and i do myself so um sometimes you are not comfortable when uh they ask or when you have to ask about what your salary expectation because you want to know a little bit of what's their budget it is okay to ask do you have a budget for that position can you share that budget with me and sometimes they'll say yes i have and i can share sometimes they will say i have but i can't sometimes they will say uh i don't have a budget what's your position so you have to be prepared to answer this question but at the same time you could use that strategy to know a little bit more about what they are offering and what's the position about. There's some websites also out there that that will tell you what certain skill sets will pay, you know, in terms of different levels. Uh, I'm not sure what they are. I think somebody was talking. I overheard someone talking about them today at work, but there are like certain websites that I don't know. Glassdoor may offer it. Glassdoor. Or, yes. Yes. Glassdoor is a good one. See, yeah. What what you know what? say uh, what a business analyst will pay with two years experience or uh, you know uh, whatever a project manager will pay with five years experience etc cetera, etc cetera. so it'll give you a, an idea of what the salary range uh, expectations are so yeah so i guess we, we're we're maybe 15 minutes uh, more than the time but i just you know i want you to if you will forget everything today you know and just remember one thing I want you to remember that you're awesome and they will love you, you know, keep that in mind, keep that in you in your mindset when you go to the interview, because this is how you will make an impression. You know, if you don't have that in mind, you know, you think that you're not good enough. This is going to make you look bad in the interview. You may need to 
shift your mindset that you they will like you they will like you they will hire you before you go to the interview because if you don't have that mindset you, it will it will look on your face it will yeah. show in your body language so you know be comfortable about that and trust that they need you more than the, you need them you know you may be thinking you know you're chasing them but they are chasing you they really want to hire somebody as soon as possible because they have a problem they want to fix by getting you hired so you know be comfortable that you know you're gonna fix that problem and just show them that they would be better with you this is what you want to give them before you leave the interview you know just that you know life will become very good if they hire you you know this is the impression that you need them to feel you know you will be able to help them with this, help them with that, and you know, make lots of good, you know, impressions and good activities, uh, either on a personal level or on a group level. So with that, I will maybe stop here sharing and and then open up for any questions anyone has in mind uh, that we can address, help. Uh, so feel free to either raise your hand or come off mute and ask your question. If not, then we can go for the group selfie. Uh, if everybody is comfortable, we can take that group selfie together. If you want to come on camera, just remember that day when you had. OK, Anara, you have a question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I hope that it's the last question. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. No worries. Yeah. I was <laughs> uh, how can we stay you know, in touch? Because um, honestly, I, have, I don't have even my LinkedIn account. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and uh, I need your help, guys. So, can I, um, you know, can I, uh, to getting in touch further on for the year? Sure, sure. You know, I will. I will put for my, my email uh, on the chat. You can maybe send me an email. We can have, you know, a quick call, and I will show you a few things uh, if you oh, want. Thanks a lot. No worries. Any other questions, anyone? No? OK, so let's do the group selfie. Does anyone want to come on camera and, and you know, be famous? You know, recruiters will see this, ca this uh, picture and then they will hire you from that picture. <laughs> OK, so we'll give it maybe a few seconds here if anyone wants to. You know, Prepare his background or okay. Anyone else? I'm sitting up now, Ahmed. <laughs> Can't see that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So be ready. One, two, and smile. Thank you, everybody. That's really good smile. <clears throat> Excellent. So we, you know, please come to those calls and and come and ask questions. This is very important for you and for everybody to learn together. You know, if you don't ask those questions, you know, we will not learn. I personally learned a lot from people who are asking questions, and I got their feedback, and this made me think, you know, that there is something that I need to do maybe on my side. So thank you everybody for your time, and I don't want to keep anyone. Um, late more. I know that people are in some in Halifax and, and Cape Breton. It's a little bit even after 10 here. So thank you for showing up today. Uh, this is a good sign. Keep coming and keep uh, asking questions. Thank you. Thank you. And well, thank you very much, everyone. Feel the feedback too. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Well, bye. Yeah. Bye, Ahmed. Bye, Mike. Thank you. Thank bye. you very much. Great job. Thank you.